Now, this next item is a rather sad one because it marks the demise of a car that perhaps surprisingly has long been a favourite of the British motorist. It lasted for 18 years, despite constant predictions about its imminent death. It sold in large numbers in the face of hostile reviews from the motoring press. It's become the definitive motor car for the upwardly mobile suburban teenager. Sue Baker reports from the graveside. Ford's Cologne factory in December and the very last Capri, number 1,886,647, leaves the line. One of a special edition of a thousand farewell Capris. All the photographers, though, are British, because although the Capri was only built in Germany for the last few years of its life, the car was designed and mainly bought in Britain. The early prototypes looked very aggressive. Ford of Britain wanted their own version of the successful Mustang sports car from America, but they were eventually toned down until only the heavy rear three-quarter panels were left, and they were changed when the rear passengers couldn't see out. So the final car had the characteristic U-shape to the rear windows, which was to stay with the Capri to the end. And the commercials played on the idea of the Capri as an affordable sports car with passenger and luggage space as well. Ford Capri, the car you always promised yourself, from £890. We were trying to seek out a market opportunity between the boring saloons of the time, the Hilmer Minxes, the Vauxhall Victors, and the, uh, uh, and indeed Cortinas, yet at the other hand, recognizing there was a tremendous desire for people to own things like Jaguar E-types and Ferrari fixed head coupes. Uh, that was the sort of market we wanted to go for, a cheap, affordable car with all the looks and pizzazz and probably poser value of a Jaguar or a Ferrari. Basically, we started from the Cortina, we were given an objective of spending 40 pounds, which isn't very much money, 40 pounds on styling the car so that you can sell it for no more than 80 to 90 pounds more than an equivalent Cortina. And as you know, the Capri came in at 890 pounds, which was about 90 pounds over the Cortina equivalent. It was always intended as a family car. It is a four-seater, well, just about but with a very strongly sporty flavour. Short, stubby little gear stick, a cluster of instruments, and all this matte black inside. More important, it was a sporty car from the outside with this long, swept line, the fast back tail end, and this lovely long bonnet. Ah, but it didn't actually need a bonnet as long as this. The engine didn't take up anything like all the space under the bonnet. In fact, some people called this a Cortina in drag or a sheep in wolf's clothing. But it wasn't all about image. Ford had motorsport in mind with the Capri. And Clark is adopting the race driving tactics of all time as he throws that Capri about as though it's a matchbox. And speeding the car through to those... The drive version was planned from the start, but in spite of success in rallycross, the road car never materialised. Ford said the four-wheel drive system took up too much of the limited interior space. Capri's dominated the European Touring Car Championships in 1971 and 72. The cars were RS2600s, developed by Ford of Germany to improve the Capri's sporting image. Their reign was short. They were defeated in 1973 by a wealthier team from BMW. With the RS3100, Ford of Britain tried their own racer, seen here at the company's Dunton test track in Essex. Launched at the same time as the first fuel crisis, only 250 were sold. The fuel crisis mood also affected the Capri's replacement. Five years after its launch, and with more than a million of them by now on the road, the Capri was revamped and the Mark II came along. Now, in keeping with the trend of the early 1970s in the post-fuel crisis era, cars were becoming more practical and with less sporty overtones, and the Capri went the way of the trend. It became a hatchback. All its sporting overtones were diluted. The emphasis shifted to it being much more of a family car with a tailgate, with a folding rear seat, the interior was toned down and the whole flavour of the car changed and they coined a new marketing phrase to match it, the once in a lifetime car. But sales were disappointing as buyers were not impressed with the new sober Capri. 
Meanwhile, older cars were enjoying more success as transport for the urban hero. So For a real driver's car, though, the Capri buyer had to wait until 1981. The new injection, with its 2.8-litre engine and torta suspension, turned the Capri back into a desirable car, even though its wet weather grip wasn't quite as good as the advert suggested. It goes light. The injection model was really a great success in rejuvenating interest in the Capri, both as a performance car and as a racing machine. And so it triggered a lot of special versions with modified bodies and engines, like the Tickford, with its very lavish interior, lots of leather and walnut, with its turbocharged 2.8-litre engine, its special suspension, and its very heavily modified bodywork. This car is the Swaymar 2.9 Turbo. It has 285 brake horsepower from this turbocharged engine, and they say it'll do at least 160 miles an hour, and with a 0 to 60 acceleration time in well under six seconds. It has the bodywork to match, all the lovely fared out wheel arches and this beautiful color keyed paintwork. In fact, altogether, it's really quite a mean machine. So, with all this new interest, why does the Capri have to go? Basically because the demand has moved into hot hatchbacks and uh, XR3s and Golf GTIs and Peugeot 205 GTs. We ended up basically selling an 18-year-old uh, antique at the rate of 1% of the British market, 18,000 cars a year, to a very loyal owner body, most of whom are very disappointed we're not replacing Capri, and there are 18,000 buyers out there at least who would like to see some sort of Capri come back. But I can't see Ford producing a new Capri for only 18,000 buyers a year. So, if you must have one, £11,000 will buy one of these last 280 specials. Well, that's all for this week. Next week, we're back at the same time, same place, 8 o'clock on Tuesday. We've got a very interesting report on relationships between the motorist and the police. We've got a look at uh, two budget price family cars, the Hyundai Pony and the Sierra Ibiza and an all-action report on the sport of off-road four-wheel drive trials. So see you then. Until then, drive safely. Good night.